Hey everybody, this is Jim at sp500chart.com. It's after the close on uh, August 30th, 2012. We're going to take a quick look at the S&P. Kind of interesting day today. And uh, before we do it, I just want to remind you that uh, nothing said at the website or in this video is intended to, to be used as investment advice. It's for educational purposes. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And you need to make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional, just a guy that draws lines on charts. Here we go. And I'm doing this uh, video based upon the assumption that you've been following the, the past couple of days. I don't think I've got a, any new subscribers who are coming online just today. So I think that's a safe thing that I can do. Basically, we have talked about this level here, right? I want to say it's right around 1398-ish as an important support level. If this breaks, then we will probably end up with the aftermath of this acting as a head and shoulders uh, top, taking us down to roughly 1370 but here's the trick if that move does um, take place then that will also mean that we have broken this support line that's kind of internal to the uh, rising wedge kind of pattern that we've had for the past a uh, couple of months okay and it also means we will take out this support line that is drawn over the last over the these two bottoms that actually were out of range of these one two three four right here so uh, is there is there a, a, a possible other explanation uh, well yeah I mean there's always the possibility that um, that we could get a little support right here in this gray line, but that, you know, is below that, that uh, uh, target minimum. So my feeling is, is that if we break this uh, purple neckline, then we will probably come down pretty hard until we hit maybe the 1360 area right about here 1359 1360 that may produce a bounce how strong a bounce I, I do not know and part of that depends upon just how how this assuming now assuming this breaks to the downside and, and that's not a good assumption yet um, if we do break this down however the minimum target will take us underneath these two lines of, of support, meaning we will come down to an area where we will have to find some other reason for support. And that other reason could very well be this little line right here. And if it happens to coincide um, with roughly 1360 at some point, going into maybe, oh, the middle of next week, then we may be looking at picking up a bounce off of gap support. Remember, we woke up one day, and suddenly the market had decided, wait a minute, let me go to a 30-minute chart here. The market decided to gap up from 1364 to about 1388. It's a 24-point gap. I think the people who miss that gap may be lying in wait should the S&P come back to the low 1360s. So I think that may be a reasonable expectation to get a bounce here. But uh, you have to realize that if we break this line and this line, even that bounce is subject to being nothing more than a temporary uh, condition. So guys, right now, just to, just to cut to the chase, the important levels that we are watching are once again right around this level right here. We momentarily broke down below that, but not 
in a in in not in a technically significant manner. So you know we need to come down and and really take this out by a good five, six, seven points. And we need to close under this line too. Um, this is a rising line that we've been looking at right here. So it could be that we have a date with destiny in a, in a day or two where, where this could get taken out along with this. But guys, right now, this doesn't look too swift to be a bull. So I would, you know, exercise some caution. And uh, if we start taking out this level here and then this level here, I, I think you can assume that it's a foregone conclusion. The market will continue and take out that 13 set or at least visit that 1370 level where I think there would probably be more weakness to take us down to the 1360s. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I thought we might get a little bounce today before we come back down, but I was wrong. We did not. And uh, that, that uh, idea was based upon a very small set of circumstances. And I hope I, I uh, stated that clearly, that when we're looking at these little tiny trend lines, you just can't ascribe that much strength to them. Uh, in the notes for yesterday's video, I mentioned that it seems as if the longer the trend line is, if you look at these lines as being barriers, then the ones that are longer are more substantial barriers. If you look at them as being fences, the ones that have more history in the chart will be, will be stronger, or if you think of them as fences, they'll be taller. But when you get just a little tiny pattern like this right here or right here, it's really easy. It's pretty easy for the markets to get uh, over or, or under some of these short-lived trend lines. For example, look back here. We had this little trend line. You'd think, well, that should be uh, resistance. Hey, gap up over it, no problem. So it's these longer lines that we're looking at now that really have a tendency to work um, more effectively and more reliably. So guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, I hope you get something out of these videos. And uh, judge by, judging by most people's uh, comments and, and the way people uh, subscribe to this site, it, that seems to be the case. But I hope, I hope you uh, understand nobody gets it right 100% of the time. The goal, I would say, is get it right 70% of the time and, and you will be doing quite well. So, hey, take care.